governor's visit. Gary Herbert is here in Utah County to meet with the Chamber of Commerce. Why he says Utah is one of the best places for businesses. Tuition hike. BYU students will pay a little more next semester, but most don't seem to care why many are taking this increase in stride. And debate day. T minus seven hours until the presidential candidates square off for the final time. What they are doing to get ready. I'm Jen Benson. And I'm Ashley Mungia. It's Monday, October 22nd, and in Utah, it's 12 o'clock. From KBYU and the BYU Department of Communications. is the award-winning 11 News at Noon. Business is good in Utah County and will only get better. That's the message Governor Gary Herbert shared with business leaders. 11 News reporter Kathleen Keller just got back from the Utah Valley Chamber of Commerce where the governor spoke. What's got him so bullish regarding Utah County's economy? Well, he, he considers Utah County to be his home and he's been a small business owner here. He says what makes Utah County unique is what makes Utah County successful. And the governor's speech to the Utah Valley Chamber of Commerce focused on Utah's economy and how we are better off than most of the rest of the country. The governor credits not only market forces and strategies, but also the spirit of volunteerism and hard work he says are all over Utah County. We've got to work together. We have unique challenges. And if we're going to uh, uh, find solutions to those challenges, it's going to be yeah, an all hands on deck team effort. And I'm pleased to see us coming together. Governor Herbert also brought up things Utah needs to work on. He wants to raise the bar on education, look more into sustainable energy, and increase efficiency in the state government. Kathleen, you mentioned energy. What other specifics did the governor offer? Well, he mentioned a 10-year energy plan where he plans to tap into more into natural, res natural energy in Utah and natural resources like coal and oil. Thanks, Kathleen. A private equity firm in Europe is buying Ancestry.com for $1.6 billion. Premiere is taking over the Provo Base website, which is the world's largest online family history resource. The site says they will remain headquartered in Provo, and the company expects to close a deal early next year. People in Provo can now research taxes, business licenses, and health codes a lot more easily. A new online system allows people to search and print city ordinances. You can see zoning laws, water regulations, and the 2030 vision plan for Provo. Surf to the city's website to check it out. Provo Mayor John Curtis is backing a man's fight against a local towing company. Brent Blackwood says University Parking Enforcement told him to pay impound fees even though his car was stolen then parked illegally. Mayor Curtis says it's another example of overly aggressive towing in Provo. The towing company says Blackwood is ultimately responsible for his car. Provo's new police chief wants to target those who prey on the elderly, and now he's got some federal money to do it. The U.S. Department of Justice is giving Provo police $400,000 to help fight crimes against seniors, which can range from physical abuse to financial bilking. Chief Rick Gregory is also creating an elder abuse task force. Starting next fall, BYU students will pay more for their education. The administration says they are increasing tuition for the fourth straight year. 11 News reporter Randall Vaudry is live on BYU campus. So Randall, what are students saying about this change? Well, most aren't thrilled about having to pay more to learn, but they do realize that BYU is one of the best buys at a private university in the nation. It may not be the news students wanted to hear. Brigham Young University will raise tuition 3% across all categories. University officials say that the increase is for students' benefit. We look at the rising cost of education and we see the needs that we have to make sure we give our students an excellent, superb education. Tuition costs nationwide are on the rise, but BYU continues to provide college education for a low price. The Associated Press says average tuition at private universities is almost $30,000 per year. Yearly tuition at BYU after the increase will still be less than $5,000. Comparatively, it is quite a minimal increase if you look across the nation at tuition increases. We're trying to make sure our students continue to have a very affordable education. The 3% increase calculates to an additional $70 per semester for full-time LDS students. Some students say they don't mind the price hike and they think of it as an additional cell phone bill or textbook per semester. I love that BYU's tuition is so low because I 
my school is completely paid for by my FAFSA grant because it's so low. I think it'll affect marginally. I mean, 3% is usually the rate of inflation, and so I mean, I kind of expect that to go up. This will be the fourth year in a row that BYU tuition increases will be below pre-recession levels. Live on the BYU campus, Randall Vaudry, 11 News. So, Randall, what are the tuition increase rates like at other universities? Well, the national average is 3.9%, so BYU's rate is about a full percent below that. All right, Randall Vaudry, live on campus. Thanks. When 11 News at noon returns. Presidential preps, the candidates are gearing up for their third and final debate, what you can expect to hear tonight. And digital downside, social media may help with friends, but a new study shows it can hurt with good grades. Stay with us. With Election Day only 15 days away, President Obama and Governor Mitt Romney are going head-to-head -head one last time. Tonight is the third and final presidential debate, and it will focus entirely on foreign policy. The candidates will discuss issues such as terrorism and troubles with China. Now, Monday's debate is a little bit different because the topic is foreign policy. Spoiler alert, we got bin Laden. <laughs> This calls into question the president's whole policy in the Middle East. Look what's happening in Syria, in Egypt, now in, in Libya. President Obama spent time preparing for the debate at Camp David. He met with top advisors, including National Security Advisor Tom Donilon, campaign strategist David Axelrod, and White House Senior Advisor David Plouffe. And presidential candidate Mitt Romney took off some time from debate prep to watch a flag football game in Florida. Political correspondents say Romney's challenge in tonight's debate will be talking about specifics when it comes to foreign policy. And remember, today is the last day to register online to vote in Utah. And early, to early Utah voting starts tomorrow. Administrators are rebranding Dixie State College and everything's on the table, including the name. A St. George advertising company is spearheading the school makeover. They're getting input from faculty, students, alumni, and the community. Officials say the new name will honor the heritage and history of the school. From laptops to smartphones, technology in schools may not be all it's cracked up to be. 11 News reporter Jessica Black shows us the more a student's into technology, the more it can hurt their grades. New research shows that digital devices can become vices on college campuses. When technology comes into play, grades and social life take a hit. We're just too surrounded by it, I guess. BYU junior Raphael of college students constantly plugged into technology. Now 98% of students own digitizing one. Alfaro says he couldn't do schoolwork without it. I feel like that's necessary for school students say they were doing more there's that sort of distractibility problem and it's just easy to allow yourself to get engaged in something when it's very accessible as opposed to focusing on the schoolwork that you need the numbers Alfaro says he likes using technology and he doesn't plan on cutting back anytime soon so students spend most of their time using technology on STEM time because it's the very thing research sees as a problem Ashley yeah, looks like we're going to be staying inside using those computers a yeah. little longer. It's getting cold out there. Definitely. Angela, what do you think? Snow anytime this week? It is getting cold out there, and I will tell you if there's going to be snow anytime this week. All I can say is, thanks to technology, I can tell you what the weather's going to be like this week. I'll let you know when we return. Good afternoon. It's beautiful and cloudy and windy today. It's a beautiful day. Well, that's all I have to say. Um, currently, the temperatures are cool, about 66 degrees, 42% humidity, wind speed of 7 miles per hour, not bad. But that wind should speed up. We've got a wind advisory throughout most of the state, meaning there's going to be wind today. So watch out for that. If you have things in the yard that need to be tied down or need to be moved into the garage, it's a good time to uh, think about that. 
throughout the day here we will see some lots of clouds um, later in the afternoon we will be seeing perhaps some thunderstorms some showers and rain tonight we've got about a 60 percent chance so pretty good chances we're going to see some wet roads tonight for your commute home so beware of that as well later tonight you can expect to see more rain sunset comes in at 6 36 p.m but with all that rain if it rains probably won't be able to see much sunset 43 degrees is the high or excuse me is the low for tonight and um, you will see what to expect across the state are pretty cool temperatures for the highs 63 up here in Logan look at this 50 over here in Wendover Cedar City look at the difference between Cedar City and St. George 58 in Cedar City and 73 in St. George isn't that beautiful it's also beautiful in the 60s up here I'm excited. we've got clouds today clouds tomorrow only a 20 percent chance of rain for St. George and and southern Utah and um, Bunny in uh, northern Utah. Oh, it's so exciting <laughs> for the snow, but it's okay. I am. We'll it's okay. It's 50 It'll 50. Okay. So it could I'll rain, it could snow. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Great. Sure. Thanks, Angela. You're welcome. BYU game. And conference contenders, one set of footballers are having a successful season. Find out how the lady, clo how close sports is next. Stay tuned. Hosted BYU to keep BYU from upsetting the nation's fifth ranked team. Notre Dame scored early by finding NFL prospect tight end Tyler Evert, but the Cougars kept pace and Riley Nelson found a wide open Cody Hoffman to tie the game at seven. BYU immediately got the ball back off an interception by Kyle Vinoy, which led to this touchdown pass to tight end Kanea Kua Friel for a 14 7 halftime lead. But Motor Notre Dame marched their way to victory in the second half, outscoring the Cougars 10 0 and rushing for 270 yards, earning the 17 14 win, preventing the upset. BYU fans had a solid turnout at the game, making the trip to see the Cougs take on the Irish. As 11 Sports reporter Brady Tucker tells us, Notre Dame fans were more than accommodating. The Notre Dame football experience isn't your typical tailgate party. How could it be with bagpipes, touchdown Jesus, first down Moses, and the oldest college marching band in the country? Those things make up the richest of football traditions, but Notre Dame officials believe there's always room for improvement. About a half dozen years ago, we decided that we didn't really want to take anything for granted, and so we went back and conducted kind of a full-blown examination of really everything that went into a football game and tried to figure out, no matter what it was, is there something that we can improve? Is there something that we can do better? There's no doubt Irish fans know how to tailgate, but it's their attitude towards visitors that sets them apart. Welcome to Notre Dame. And if, if you're Brady Tucker, Notre Dame at the road. Thriller against Santa Clara sat the advantage after sneaking out a 31 29 first set and came away with a 3 2 win, giving the Cougars just their. Women's soccer in the WCC is winding down, and after San Diego fell to Portland Friday night, fifth ranked BOU had a chance to climb into first place. Lindsay Lisenball Cutshaw's free kick was headed by a Gonzaga player into the net to give BYU the lead, but the Bulldogs got back into the game by scoring during the chaos of, of Kelly Colahan score, and the high-powered Cougar offense kept kicking it as the Bay beat Gonzaga 4-1. Recovering from injury is one thing, but to recover from three ACL tears is another. 11 Sports reporter Derek McAllister tells us how one BYU track athlete has the passion to come back. Hard is something sprinter Alyssa Hansen has plenty of, one year after her third knee surgery, she has no problem taking her place on the BYU track team. Most athletes would hang up their shoes after an injury like an ACL tear, especially if it happened more than once. BYU track and field sprinter Alyssa Hansen decided she would lace her shoes up and not give up. The first two times came in high school and both required surgery. As a BYU freshman, she set eight personal records in the 400 meter hurdles and almost qualified for the NCAA national track meet. Hansen says she was ready to continue her success her sophomore again. Oh, it's real sad. Um, it's just like surgery's hard, but I just thinking of the recovery process and thinking of like losing everything I'd come up to with track and having to start over again. It's just heartbreaking. Hansen says it wasn't easy to go through rehab a third time, saying it took a lot of prayer, dedication, and knowing what she wanted. Hansen's motivation paid off in the end because she's on the track running with her teammates again. It really speaks to her character and how strong-willed strong, strong -willed mentally she really is because I don't think anybody else could handle going through three different surgeries like that, but this girl, she can't. With the hardest part of her rehab over, Hansen says she can now focus on the second hardest part of coming back, 
getting into shape. She is doing that by taking it one practice at a time, with her eyes set on competing again. Hansen says she'll take the momentum from her freshman year and hit the track running. Her goals for this year are to set new personal records and to make it to nationals. Ben? Thanks, Derek. Well, it's great to see her back on the team and hope mm -hmm. that she can do well and be free, from, be free from injury. Right. Yeah, I bet it'd be so hard to recover just from one torn ACL, but she's out there running after three. It's amazing. I mean, surgeries, I mean, that can't be good on your body, but yeah. it looks like she's running. That's, and that's a lot of rehab, yeah. too. Yeah. She's very and we're not... Next time you kneel down, be careful how you do it. Quarterback Tim Tebow is trademarking his famous kneel. The pose known as Tebowing went viral last season when Tebow played for the Denver Broncos. Tebow would get on one knee, bow his head, and clench his fists to celebrate after almost every touchdown. The religious quarterback says he won't profit from the prayer pose. He just wants people to stop doing it disrespectfully. Well, wow. that's pretty crazy. He's trademarking I it. Know. I wonder what the next player is going to do. There's always that. a new I, one. I think the pose has already jumped the shark, so yeah. you know, it's not a big deal anymore. Right. Yeah, there might be just another one to just. Angela, do. I think you're going to have to make up one. I think I will have to yeah, make up for my sure. own pose, that's but nothing need. religious, something that won't be disrespectful. Okay, good, good. I'll make my own Perfect. pose. We'll have like to work this. work with that's that after the show. All right. That's 11 News at noon for Monday, October 22nd. You can join us anytime on our website, 11 newsbyuedu Thanks for watching and have a great afternoon. Thank you.